Oh, hey, long time no speak. It's been a few months since the last podcast episode, and when I went on my summer hiatus, the plan was to take more time off and then just, you know, enjoy the summer months. And that is not exactly what happened, and that is what we're going to be getting into today. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Wellness Simplified Podcast. Simple wellness tips to help you improve your life without turning it upside down. With your host, award-winning fitness instructor, nutrition coach, and wellness expert, Susie Fevens. Welcome back. Long time no speak, long time no hear. I don't know how to reference that. Our last episode was, I think, June 10th, and now it is September the 2nd, so it has been a hot minute. And I purposely took a hiatus over the summer months to give myself a little bit more space, you know, to enjoy summer. (laughs) And that's not exactly what happened, but it was very good that I had taken this intentional hiatus because I needed it. So today's episode, we're going to be talking about how some things are going to be changing a little bit around here, but also how they're not changing. So essentially, our podcast is staying the same, Wellness Simplified with Susie Fevens. We are going to be going to an either... um, bi-weekly or bi-monthly, no, semi-monthly, I always get those mixed up, you know, bi-weekly or semi-monthly format where I'm issuing, prob- or releasing rather, probably two episodes a month as opposed to doing it on a weekly basis. And we're going to start to incorporate a little bit more than just what you normally um, think of as wellness. Because when we think of wellness, a lot of people just think about stuff that we've been talking about for years now, fitness, nutrition, stress resiliency, all that sort of thing. But we're going to start to expand on that a little bit. And I will tell you why in a moment. But first, I'm going to get real with you and share something that I haven't publicly shared. And that is that two months ago, at the time I'm recording this, I pretty much not pretty much. I did. I had a mental breakdown. Um, I had a class that evening. I drove to the class crying the whole time and telling myself, you're okay. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. I taught the class. How? I don't know. I came home and I just dissolved into tears and I was inconsolable. My husband, who is a gem, um, did his best to try and help me, make me feel better. And was it burnout? Is it burnout? I don't know. I've been burned out quite a few times, <laughs> but it was always like a physical burnout. It was never a mental burnout. So I guess that's why it feels different. And I don't know. I don't know. I guess it was a burnout or is burnout, but just a different kind because like we all know the last few years have been really tough. I don't have kids, so I don't have that aspect of it, but as someone that a lot of other people depend on to help them feel good physically, mentally, emotionally, it can be pretty draining. But on top of that, I've made so many changes to my business over the last few years because I just knew I could not maintain the number of classes I had been teaching before the shutdown. That shutdown really did you know, open my eyes to say, or to see that I I could not continue on the tempo that I was going teaching every evening and during the day, and I just could not do it. But still, but still, you don't really understand until you've done it how much it takes out of you to teach a group fitness class. And that is true whether it's an in-person fitness class or a virtual. Both have benefits and drawbacks. Um, Some of the drawbacks to virtual, of course, is I'm in a room by myself looking at a computer. The way I have my um, virtual classes set up is I'm not seeing other people to help maintain the integrity of the video stream and to help maintain people's privacy. Nobody can see anybody except for me. So it's just me all of the time. And some days people are chatty in the comments. Sometimes they're not. And I understand you can't really partake fully in a fitness class if you're running over to the computer or tablet to send comments all of the time. So the people who manage to send little messages during class, I really appreciate. But I absolutely understand the people who don't. 
But when you are in that setting and you are teaching live to a group of people you cannot see, you have to give off so much more energy and try to keep them pumped up with getting without getting anything in return. There is no energy return whatsoever unless the comments are kind of exploding, which does help. But it's just like sending all of your energy. It's like being a Care Bear, sending your Care Bear stare out into the vast nothingness, hoping that somebody is getting it and getting the good from it, but you don't really know. And then conversely, when you're teaching a live class in front of people, a lot of time, a lot of time they're absorbing your energy, but you're not getting anything back from them. You're not getting anything back. And I will joke with people saying, you know, (laughs) you can smile. It's okay because people always have just like this glum look on their face. And they're like, oh, we're concentrating. We're concentrating. Right. As if my job is easier than their job as a participant. Um, But I get it. They're not there to make me feel good. But at the same time, if I'm giving all of my energy out again and getting very little or nothing in return, it's just this output just pouring and it's almost like again that Care Bear stare or having a faucet and my faucet is turned on full blast the whole time just in hopes of getting a little something out of everybody else and you can only do that for so long before you got nothing left before you have nothing left and you know it goes even further than just classes his people will all the time all the time at least a couple times a week Someone will come up to me or send me a message or what have you. Somebody who's a current client of mine and say, I'm having this pain or something doesn't feel right here. Is there any stretches or anything I can do? And most of the time it's in my scope of practice, assuming that it is inside my scope of practice, I will give them some stretches or some exercises to help them feel better. And then they will come back to me a few days or a few weeks later and say, you know what, those stretches you gave me, they really helped. Like I'd been to physio, I'd been to the chiropractor, I'd been wherever, and nothing that they did was able to help, but the stretches you gave me helped. And I feel so much better. And of course, that's not always the case, right? Physiotherapists, chiropractors, osteopaths, all these people are very important. They do great work, but that doesn't mean that they always have a 100% success rate. And neither do I. I don't want to make myself sound to be some sort of martyr. I am not. But I am very good at diagnosing some specific things, which happen to come up all the time, which is why I'm so good at figuring them out. Anyway, the thing is, again, that's me pouring energy out because when they went to that chiropractor or that physiotherapist or whomever, Those people all got paid for their time that didn't result in a reduction in the pain. And here I've given them some exercises happily after a class or whatever. And now they feel great. But that flow of energy was going out. They've given me their thanks, which, listen, I got into this industry to help people. I'm so happy to help people. But there has to be an even flow of energies. And if I'm just giving all of my energy out, either through teaching classes or helping people without getting things in return, there's there's a significant imbalance. And that's where we were. A very significant imbalance. And, you know, getting that energy back can take many types of forms. There are classes where the people are just on and I come home and I'm just buzzing because they gave me back energy. They gave me energy. Um, Sometimes that energy comes in the form of monetary stuff, right? Like there's so many different forms of energy. But when you feel like you're just giving, 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 you're going to run out. And in between blubbering sobs, (laughs) two months ago today, I told my husband that I felt like a thousand piece puzzle And that I had given all of my puzzle pieces away. All I was left was an empty box. There was nothing left of me. And this was a week or so before we went on vacation. And man, I spent the next four days basically crying (laughs) 24-7. It was a blubbery mess. And 
the only time I felt like I was okay was when I was attached to him by the hip. And luckily for me, that was a random weekend where he actually had the weekend off. So I could stay attached to him by the hip. Um, and then the following week, I knew I had to get through the week <laughs> with him at work before we would be on vacation and I would have that time. And like, I knew that I was going to be okay. I didn't feel like I was okay, but I knew I would be. And I knew that I needed to feel what I was feeling because that was the reason I was feeling it is that I've been pushing it down for quite some time. Like that imbalance of energy has been happening for a long time. And I don't want it to feel or sound super woo woo, but you know, it's just transactional, right? If I'm putting all this energy out into the world, I either need to get it back through, through some means, through some means, but I just felt like I was giving, 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 and I was not getting enough back in return. And that's not to say that people don't show their appreciation. They do. They do. And if you're one of my clients listening to this, truly, I feel appreciated. But at the same time, when you're just giving so much of yourself and you're taking a pittance back, it's just such a huge imbalance. And I just crumbled to pieces. Truly, I crumbled to pieces. And I didn't share anything at the time because I was not in the place to share and I haven't said anything. This is the most I have talked about it and probably the most that I will talk about it for some time. And it's just because, you know, I still had that week of work to get through. I was too, I was too far in it. And unlike people in positions where they might be having difficulties, but they don't have to see a lot of people um, a lot of the time, I still had to be in front of groups of people all of the time. And I couldn't, I could not have them know that I was going through a really, really, really difficult time because I needed I needed to hold myself together to get through those classes, right? I couldn't be in a room full of 20 people with them all knowing that I had spent the last three days crying my eyes out. Like I could not, I couldn't do it. I just, I needed to be able to have some space to keep things together. So I got through the week, did as little as I could while still getting everything I needed to get done. Thank goodness, thank goodness. Back in May, I had started working towards all the things I needed to get done before I could go on vacation so that I didn't have that week before vacation scramble. Thank goodness I did that because that week before vacation, I truly just had to reply to emails and teach the classes that were scheduled. I didn't have to do all this other work because I was so exhausted. I just, I just couldn't. So I got through that. And then for the week I was on vacation, I just let myself be on vacation. I ignored quote unquote life as much as possible. Just let myself have vacation. And, you know, when you give yourself that mental space, that's when you often start to be able to work through some of the things. So back on June 30th, when I had <laughs> the breakdown, um, one thing was obvious. And that was that I either needed to pack up my fitness bags and move on to a different career, or I had to reduce the fitness down to a much smaller amount of my professional existence and do something else. So that's where I was when I went on vacation, knowing I still want to do this fitness thing. I still want to do the things that, that the people see. I want to teach the classes that I'm teaching. I want to have the podcast, all these things. I still wanted them, but I couldn't let it take up as much of my professional life as it was. So like, where do you go? Like, I can't go get a regular quote unquote regular job because... I teach classes at weird times, like Tuesday morning, Tuesday evening, Thursday morning, sometimes Thursday evening, someday Monday evening, Friday morning, Saturday morning. Like I needed to have the flexibility to do those. And in those, in those examples, like the only day that I would be available from nine until five consistently is Wednesday. Like that's not going to save the world, right? One shift a week. And also I really didn't want to go get a regular job because when you've had the freedom to make decisions on what you do and when you do it, it's hard to go back to like sitting in an office all day long anyway. So it's like, what am I going to do? So you may or may not know that back in January, I started a calligraphy course 
and I graduated. I graduated in the end of June. Actually, I had just wrapped that up just before I had the, the mental breakdown also. And I like to do some other crafty stuff. So seasonally I make wreaths and things like that. So I knew that I wanted to create this little side hustle. Um, oh, and of course my Atlantic lake life. If you don't know about that, Atlantic lake life, blah, 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 Atlantic lake life.com where I make um, digital lake illustrations. So I will illustrate um, a local lake and, you know, people who have fond memories of that lake or have a cottage on that lake, etc. Uh, really like those. So those were things that I wanted to do, but more as a creative outlet. It's not something that I wanted to press hard into making a regular income out of. If that happens, that's fantastic. But I didn't want to put that pressure on myself. But I still knew that like for a regular income, I needed to bring in more regularly than what I was. But what was that going to be? So that is where I kind of left things over vacation and tried to figure out like what did I think I wanted to do. And there were things I knew I didn't want to do. I didn't want to be a social media manager. I didn't want to do things that were going to require me to be on my computer and on social media more. I didn't want to be more attached to being online. I feel like I'm there enough. Um, so like what was that? What was that? And in the end what I decided was to go back to what I was going to do when I left high school. When I left high school, my intention was to become a chartered accountant, and that is not where I'm going. That is not where I'm going. But I feel like I have a very um, unique perspective on the world of business as an influencer, as a blogger, podcaster, fitness instructor, all of that, because I do come from an accounting and marketing background from NSCC. And not to toot my own horn, but I am a damn, I am damn good with numbers. Okay. I am really good with numbers. Like my brain was just built to understand accounting. It just was. Now I don't want to go back and become a chartered account. Like that is not what I want to do, but bookkeeping on the other hand, I do very much enjoy. And what I really love about bookkeeping is, especially for someone who is a sole proprietor or is a freelancer like me, people like me who are a one woman or man show that are doing all of these things, a lot of times they don't know how to keep up with their books. They don't. They just shove everything in a folder or in a box. And at the end of the year, they have to try and make heads or tails of it. And by then... So many things have gone unnoticed that it's going to be a much bigger deal to sort things out. So what I decided I wanted to do was become a bookkeeper that focused on people like me, freelancers, um, solopreneurs, to help them learn how to price themselves and learn how to stay on top of their sales and income to make them as profitable as possible. And on top of that, I wanted to offer some things like setting up your own Etsy shop or self-publishing books or all of these different things that I can do that will help these business owners generate more profit, but that they may not have the know-how or ability or time to do on their own. So I had to name it and I named it with thanks of my Tuesday morning uh, fitness class, who is privy to some of this information, Susie Feevens Bookkeeping and Business Solutions. So the Susie Feevens world is expanding, okay? We've got the fitness, we're now going to have the finance, and we have got the calligraphy, which is ironically named fonts and florals. So we've got like the triple F, quadruple F if you count Feevens. <laughs> so all sorts of things. So this is a longer episode than what I usually do, but I just wanted to, you know, you guys are going to be the first to have this info that my world's expanding, but at the same time, it's kind of contracting. So the fitness stuff, ever since I came back from vacation, I have limited myself to working 10 hours a week in the fitness business. And that includes teaching all of my classes. And some weeks I've had six or seven classes. So I'm not doing that much business, not business, um, office stuff. I'm batching it as much as possible. 
So some days I am just sitting there and typing out all of the emails and scheduling them for a whole month. Sometimes I am choreographing the next month's classes. Like it can really change from week to week, but I am working on a weekly or a monthly rotation. So I am making sure that I get everything done each month while batching. And I've been doing it for two months now and it's working pretty well. I don't think anyone knows that I have cut back to 10 hours a week. But at the same time, I have been working on all this other stuff to get these other businesses up and going. So Fonts and Florals is an official business. It is not going to be one of my main income streams. At least it's not my plan for it to be a main income stream. It's going to be more um, project based. So when people have calligraphy projects that they want, but also like... um, holiday base. <laughs> it's like, what is that word? So like Christmas wreaths, Easter wreaths. I'm working on a batch of fall ones right now. So that's something that I'm going to work on and off of. Um, it's It may turn into a main income stream or a consistent income stream, but that's not my goal. My goal is that just to be sort of the side thing. And the finance is going to be hopefully my main thing with the fitness Those two being the two, the two that go hand in hand, but not really at all. But yet they sort of do. Anyway, I've kind of left this, I've kind of held all this in for so long that I know I'm just kind of like vomiting this information at you. And I don't know if anyone is even still listening, but there's been a lot of, a lot of transitions as I start to bring the finance back in and I have done a bunch of courses. I'm taking some courses just to make sure that I am fresh and remember how to do everything. So far, so good though. Um, And I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I love finance stuff so, so much. I love digging into the numbers, looking at the reports and doing the things like I did for myself to make sure that I am earning a decent hourly wage. And that is one of the services I'm going to offer to freelancers, to solopreneurs is to hire me to help them go through their finances and figure out what is the hourly wage they should be shooting for, like when it comes to projects, because a lot of things that we do, especially as influencers, are project based. So if someone's offering you $100 to do something, you really need to have some real world data to back up whether that is a worthy um, contract for you or not. Now, $100 is not a lot, especially when you think about the fact that you only get to pay yourself a percentage of that because you need to keep some for taxes, you need to keep some for expenses, and for whatever other categories you decide are right for your business. And you need to think about how long it's going to take you to produce it. And as an influencer, there is an X factor, right? Because part of the thing they're paying for is your impact. So if they're offering you $100 for a project that's going to take four hours for you to do, that is a hard no, unless you are brand, brand, brand new to the influencer space and you're just trying to get your feet wet, that's going to be a little bit of a different situation. But there's so many people out there who are just picking numbers out of the air with no rhyme or reason for why they're choosing them. And you're so much more empowered and so much better able to price yourself accordingly when you know, A, how much you need to be making in order to support yourself and your family, and B, when you know how much you're earning per hour when you take on some of these contracts. So yeah, some contracts you're not going to know right off up front if it's a contract for like three reels or TikToks and a blog post and whatever. You're not going to know exactly how long that's going to take you, but you are going to know the price they're offering you and you're going to be able to use your hourly rate to determine is this contract going to take me? Do I think it's going to take me more hours than what they're paying me? If you know that your hourly rate, I'm just going to choose this for simplicity, is $100 an hour and the contract is $1,000 and you know it's going to take you 20 hours to do the work, then that's not going to be a worthwhile thing for you. You can go back and negotiate either more money or smaller deliverables. But if you don't know, you don't know. And a heck of a lot of people do not know. So I am really, really honestly excited to continue on with the fitness stuff. I think it's so important, but also to help power and people, empower people to 
take control of their finances and get paid what they deserve to be paid because I don't want anybody else to feel like I felt like they were giving out way too much of their energy and not getting enough back. Even though I'm still teaching the same amount of classes I was when I had that pivotal night, I feel so much better because I am spending so much less time on that side of the business. You know what? It was such a huge mindset shift for me when I did out all the calculations and said, okay, you have got yourself a very profitable part-time business as opposed to you have a full-time business that is not paying you all that much. When I was able to make that change and say, okay, you have 10 hours a week to do everything that needs to be done, but you know that you're getting paid a fair wage, that changed everything immediately for me. And I really, truly cannot wait to help some other people make some mindset shifts and some changes like that for themselves. Because when you go from feeling like you're just giving everything away and like just giving everything away to feeling like, okay, well, I have this amount of time in order to make sure that I'm upholding my own worth, right? It changes everything. It changes everything. And I feel fortunate that I'm in this position because I could go through all that. I didn't have to worry about losing my home or not having food to eat or anything like that. I could take a beat, have a moment to have (laughs) that breakdown and then figure out how to move forward. And so that is, that is it. I've been talking way longer than I usually do, but the wellness simplified podcast is still going to be the wellness simplified podcast but you can expect that maybe some extra finance tidbits are going to find their way into the podcast. You may even find that I start talking about books more. I might have a monthly roundup of books. I don't know. I don't know. But I am done. I'm done focusing on wellness as being just fitness, nutrition, and stress management because there's so many other things. Because, you know, I... I've been tossing around like all the F words, not all of them. Well, yeah, I've tossed around them all, <laughs> but I'm talking about fitness, finance, fonts and florals. But in this instance, fitness, finance, and fun, that is more what I'm thinking as far as the wellness simplified going forward, because truly, if your finances aren't in a good spot, your wellness is not simplified. If your fitness, if your nutrition, if stress management is not managed, your wellness is not simplified. And if you're not having any fun, your wellness isn't simplified. So wellness simplified podcast isn't really going to change, but it's going to change a little bit, but hopefully for the better. And I promise we will go back to more of our short format episodes, 15 minutes and under. But this one, I wanted it to be a little bit longer because I wanted to share a little bit more about what's been going on and I really have just been blattering on. <laughs> I don't even know what I said. I, I'm already cringing about <laughs> wanting to delete this and just starting over, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. We're just going to post it. We're just going to move on with our lives, right? So if listening to this has inspired you or you've been surprised about something or you're excited about my calligraphy or my finance endeavors, I would love for you to reach out and let me know. I'd love to talk. Um, You can find me on Instagram at suzy.fevens. You can email me at info at suzyfevens.ca. And yeah, until the next time I talk to you, which will be in about two weeks time, I'm going to be over here setting up a little finance business. So Have yourself a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the whole episode. I really appreciate it. If you're not already subscribed, you can subscribe in iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen. And if you want to hang out with me virtually, head on over to welluniversity.ca. That's where all of my virtual classes and programs live. And none of that's changing. So thank you again. I appreciate you so much. I will talk to you next time.